Hello, everybody. This is Brad. Welcome to The Bad Show, which has not been running as smoothly as I've wanted the last few weeks due to uh, having to take care of other things, but that's fine. Like, it's not like, you know, it's not like the, uh, there's like a, you know, a tremendous ton of people waiting to hear my opinion on anything that's happening in particular. But, um, anyway, I'm here. We got some things to talk about. Primarily negative things, which is going to be in the, like, second half. But anyway, I'm going to do my usual shtick where I go over stuff that's been going on in Fortnite lately. And then I'll get into the big thing that I want to talk about. Because there's not really been anything else positive other than some, you know, random, you know, there's a lot of game sales going on right now as uh, people are getting ready for the holidays. And that's always fun to keep an eye out on. But um, other than that, like, today as I'm recording this on November 20th, uh, like, um, uh, Age of Calamity just came out, the Hyrule Warriors game, the new one, uh, which I will get to later, but right now let's jump right into Fortnite, what's been going on, recent new skin added to the game in terms of this big Marvel thing that's going on, uh, the Black Widow snowsuit, which is different from the previous Black Widow skin that was released, which was just simply called the Black Widow outfit, which was implied to be... Not Black Widow herself, necessarily, but a character in the game dressed up as Black Widow. At least that's the way I understand it. The same thing with the Star-Lord outfit. It's not necessarily Star-Lord. It's a character from Fortnite dressed up as Star-Lord. So, I mean, it is it is what it is. But it is nice to have a character that actually is, you know, supposed to be the, you know, the actual true blue Black Widow uh, in the game, and it's a good-looking skin, to be honest. I'm kind of disappointed a little bit, not much, that there's no, you know, standard variant of her where she's in her traditional, you know, black outfit. But this is, like, uh, this is referencing a specific outfit that she's worn in the games, and I think she's supposed to wear in whatever upcoming movie is supposed to be out soon or uh, in the works. So, it's fine. It actually is a, uh, I think it's a fairly unique-looking skin, as I don't, I don't really remember too many uh, skins that are mostly white or, you know, white outfits. I know, like, from the previous season, you had, like, the ghost and everything, but it, she doesn't she doesn't look like that, though. I uh, that, that may not make sense, but I don't, at least in my possession of skins that I have, I didn't unlock, like, the shadow and ghost alts of skins in Chapter 2, Season 2, because I didn't completely understand the game and what, it, you know, what the whole all the challenges and all were I kind of just wanted to play but um and I wasn't concerned about like the skins at all at that point you know I joined to get just to get Deadpool and then when they started adding all these other skins and you know I, I was like hey wait this is actually kind of cool to get the skins so you know but yeah this is a cool character they did this uh cup the same way they did with uh Ghost Rider and Daredevil, where if you rank high enough um, in the com uh, in this particular cup for her, you could get her for free a few days ahead of time. And I didn't play; I didn't bother playing. I I've only tried competitive tournaments like twice. The first time I don't remember. I think I made it into like maybe the top thirty percent, and that was just sheerly surviving and making it, you know, to decent, you know, like towards the end of the game by avoiding everyone. I literally tried to hide as much as possible. I think I maybe got two points in the first term I played in by taking out an opponent. So, just, just the competitive scene for this game. Like, even like the casual scene for Fortnite is hard to compete in. So, you know the competitive side is going to be even worse. So, I don't even bother with it anymore. But, uh, yeah. It's a really good skin to have. I'm not a big fan of the back bling, though. These holographic back blings, unless they're, like, actually, like, you know, like it's a robot projecting something off of their back or something like that, as opposed to just something just hanging off of their back that there's no real reason or logic to be there. Like the Sentinel head that's Wolverine's back bling that's officially his. Like, it's a cool, but it, it, the back bling by itself, it's cool. Like, it's cool that, you know, there's a sentinel head thing. And there is that extra unlockable feature that you can get where it's sort of, like, malfunctioning. It's not completely dead. 
and it makes uh, sounds and lights up or a little bit or something. But it's not like Wolverine doesn't normally have a sentinel head, you know, hanging off his back. I mean, that's just kind of silly. But, uh, but yeah, like the hologram projection thing on her back that's just kind of there, that's just her Black Widow symbol. It's kind of lazy. I mean, just give her a backpack or something. Just, I don't know. Everything else about it is good, though. I mean, the skin itself is really cool. So uh, we'll move on from Black Widow now to the other skin, the one that's currently or was the uh, center of attention and competition is the Venom skin. We finally got it revealed. It's been teased and suggested and hinted at for so long now, and it's finally happening. And this, I think they said this will be the last of the cups for this season. The season is due to end in like a, uh, the very end of the month. So we're almost at the end. Uh, so this is probably, I'm guessing, is probably the last skin. There may, maybe they've got another skin or two hidden up their sleeves for Marvel before this whole big Nexus War comes to an end. But this skin actually is really cool. The one thing, again, I don't like is the back bling. I didn't like the back bling for... Uh, Daredevil's is not... The, it, Daredevil's is okay. It's his, like, his sonar ability, power that he has. You know, to make up for the fact that he's blind. Uh, it's fine. It shouldn't be coming, you know, out of his back. But that one's not as bothersome to me because it's not always visible. It, you know, it fades in and out. Which is a cool effect. Uh, but at least that one is, you know, related to his powers. In... Ghost Rider's case, it's just a big ball of fire wrapped in chains sitting on his back. Again, that's not natural for the character. Like, I get that you want to give people something to buy, but, I mean, does the character have to have a back bling? If there's not something that would be appropriate for it? It just seems like a, a reason to jack up the price, in my opinion. Same with, like, the Silver Surfer. There was no need for a back bling there. At least that back bling, to me, isn't quite as bad. Because, you know, Silver Surfer is, like, this sort of divine character. With, you know, like, cosmic energy. But again, it didn't need one. Forgive me as I drink. But, um... Venom's back bling is the same. It's a big ball of symbiote... Uh, just gloop that kind of just sputters around on his back, which is cool. And I would say, like, the saving grace of it would may be, like, the skin appears to be alive, for lack of a better term, because it is a symbiote. But apparently the skin does this on its own. Like, the little, uh, I don't want to say tentacles, because that's not right, but, like, the tendrils or whatever you want to call them of... Uh, where this the the symbiote itself is alive and is you know um you know shaping itself or readjusting itself to shape to the body of you know Eddie Brock you know where it shows that the actual skin is alive in in and of itself there's movement so the skin is not never settling to show how it's able to you know adapt itself to do whatever Including in the image here, where it forms its own pickaxe. Which is a cool visual. But yeah, the, the skin itself is cool. And actually, what I don't think anybody was expecting is there is a variant of the skin. Which is based on a different comic. And it looks even more vicious than the standard Venom. So, that's cool. And I'm actually not sure which one I like. I think I prefer the classic one. as I'm just That's just kind of how I am. I prefer characters when they retain their iconic, uh, you know appearances which is the same reason why i wished a uh, black widow had her black outfit as an alt instead of just the white snowsuit but again you know you know it's fine as it is but yeah it, but the 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 more vicious looking venom is actually very impressive like the skin is alive again in that case where you could see the skin is moving and the symbiote is you know readjusting constantly to its form both skins do that, but the more vicious alternate skin does it even more, and so it, it looks even more unsettling. And of course, it is a big skin, like people were worried about, 
So it is big and bulky like Brutus, but of course, you know, there's no, the hitboxes remain the same. So, you know, you're not getting an in-game, you know, there's no, there's no real in-game advantage to using this skin or disadvantage. They all play the same. So, but there is something, um, this is going on right now. I believe that today is, tomorrow will be Saturday. I believe that this Venom skin should drop in the shop tomorrow. And they had a little bit of a delay with it because they ran the big update uh, uh, around the same time they were going to do this. And the update dropped early for Xbox, so it kind of screwed things up. I'm still not sure what exactly happened in that uh, situation. But... Everything was cleared out. There is something going on that I saw this morning where people who were uh, who played in the Venom Cup were mistakenly given the Black Widow skin as a reward for, you know, placing high enough. And some people got both. And then some people who competed in the Venom Cup may have not have been given Venom or something like that. And then... Uh, were granted Venom later, but had the Black Widow skin that they had justly earned, I guess, maybe from competing in the previous cup as well and winning that uh, in that competition, or maybe buying it out of the shop, were mistakenly taken from them. So, for some reason, this has caused a lot of like technical issues that they're going to have to sort out. So, I don't know. And I guess uh, before I move on to the next little Fortnite topic, which is another sort of you know, weird piece of, I guess, misinformation or just lack of information. Uh, apparently, mobile players are going to get to start playing again soon. I think there's some hope that Epic and Apple are going to settle their big legal battle out of court to try to keep this thing from going any further. I don't know that for sure. I didn't really read too much into it because I'm kind of just done with it overall. Kind of said my piece on, you know, it. There's, you know, both sides are in that fight for their own selfish reasons. You know, I said, you know, if I, if, if the best outcome for gaming as a whole is that Epic wins, then I would like Epic to win. But I don't, you know, it, it, it's, it's just not really even necessary to pick a side, though. Ultimately, Epic just wants more of the money they feel they're entitled to. And Apple's like, no, we made a deal with you. You know, I, I don't know. I just hope that the people who love Fortnite can be able to play again soon. Or any other game that Epic has that people can't play on mobile now because of the whole battle there. But anyway, that's that. And we'll move on to the thing that uh, kind of aggravated me. And that's concerning the last laugh pack. Now, on the 17th, the last laugh pack was officially made available. The catch that no one knew about was... It was only for the physical release. Now, we had not heard this before. As people started going like, oh, well, here's the last laugh. Okay, well, well, it should drop in the store, you know, this evening or whatever. And, you know, just got to be patient for it. But then we started hearing talks that, no, there's no information, apparently, in the shop data from people who know how to dig into that stuff uh, to suggest that the last laugh pack is not available or won't be coming to the shop. There's no inform there's no like data in the game for it or something like that. And people were like, huh, I wonder what's going on there. And then eventually it came out that the physical version of the game that you have to per uh, physically purchase is the only version of the game. Or you have to buy a digital code from say Amazon or GameStop or whatever to get this game to get this way. You can't just buy it straight out of the uh out of the item shop now they did clarify that the game will be in the item shop or this pack will be in the item shop at some point in december which i think they should have made clear from the beginning instead of you know because they they revealed this pack months ago i believe it was towards the end of september that they announced this and remember we're in the middle of a marvel themed uh season right now and so it's very interesting that they, you know, released this and, you know, they revealed it and released it in the middle of a Marvel, you know, 
thing. So these skins are available and playable and legit now. But if you don't want to go physically buy one, you got to wait till next month. Which, you know, makes me wonder, you know, the season's about to end, so what is coming next month? Is is it going to be a DC-themed uh, season? Could be. A lot of people seem to be suggesting that. You know, the idea was uh, that, you know, the uh, from what I understand is that Epic likes to sort of tease future content, you know, in ways that don't directly say, you know, that something is happening. And in Season t uh, 2, Chapter 3, the secret skin we got was Aquaman, and then later Black Manta joined. And then at some point around the time of, uh, I can't remember what the event was called, but it was for DC, they brought back the Batman packs that they had previously released before, for people to buy again. So you could get two different versions of Batman, uh, Catwoman, and two different versions of Harlequin. So that's that, those are the three Batman characters that are already in Fortnite. So they allowed you to get them again. So there's a total of five characters from the DC Universe in this game. You know, that now is starting to feature Marvel characters. Because remember, I think Deadpool was the very first one that came out. That's not counting, uh, that's not counting, uh, the, the, uh, oh God, the, uh, Black Widow outfit and the Star-Lord outfit, which are not necessarily the same characters. So Deadpool was the first, and then later we got the X-Force. We got Psylocke, Domino, and Cable were added. Then later... In Chapter 2, Season 3, we're given Captain America, who arrives in the same fashion as the other heroes do at the start of Season 4. That was sort of the tease for what was about to happen. But again, remember, at the, around that same time, we're getting Black Manta, and Aquaman became available. Then they brought back in Batman and Harley and Catwoman. So, a lot of superheroes are dropping into the map, and right now, while the focus may be on like Tony Stark and Galactus and Doctor Doom, you know, the Joker coming to the game, a major DC villain, one of the most iconic DC villains and one of the most iconic comic book villains in general, you know, being added to this game is a big deal. So I think there's a good chance that the next season could be themed in DC could it be a DC versus Marvel theme? Could it be DC and Marvel teaming up? To take down some greater threat. Possibly. I think that there's going to be some original story content related to it. Because there, what is the reason that Midas is returned? Why is Midas in this pack? In this new form that is either some sort of futuristic armor or a robotic body? I don't know. Midas has been present. And has had a heavy presence in this story and game. For the last three seasons. Including this one and the previous two. Because he was in the Battle Pass, there was the whole thing with Oro that people were talking about that was Midas actually Oro, or the two related, are they separate or just related, or, or are they just similar by coincidence? And then, Season 3 starts off with Midas' apparent death at the hands of a loot shark in the uh, season's uh, cinematic opening. Which, of course, then almost directly afterwards introduces Aquaman. But... Then nightmare, uh, night, Fort Nightmares happens, and Midas returns from the dead as Shadow Midas. Now he's gone again, but here we have it just weeks after, you know, Fort Nightmares, and he's back in the game as a new skin, and the, you know, the in-game sale of him will happen next month. So I think all of these things are connected. There's no reason to release a Joker, Batman, DC-themed pack specifically for this and feature him in the trailer, which heavily... Which, of course, it highlights uh, all three of the skins, but primarily features Joker, whose laughter can be heard throughout the trailer that was uh, released of Joker laughing maniacally. So... 
I think that this is all some sort of story that's going to happen. And I'm excited to see it. Because I think it would be weird to go from a battle with Galactus this season to just something completely original next season that's not tied in at all. If you want to start fresh, I'd say you start fresh at a new chapter instead of a new season. But I don't know. That would take like a big dramatic thing. But who knows? This is supposedly going to be a very, very big event. And I look forward to it whenever it does happen. So let's move on. We're going to shift gears now to the only other thing I want to talk about today. And that is, of course, the deal with Nintendo and what's been going on with them. As I take one more bite or two of this uh, little cookie cake thing. I wanted a snack. Anyway, as I try to chew this, we have the uh, the big house. Now I don't know much about these guys. They up here. I assume they're just some people uh, who stream games. So, I don't know what their business is. I don't really know much about them. But apparently they organized a tournament to stream online that you had to pay to uh, be a part of or something like that to stream um, a tournament of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Super Smash Bros. Melee. But, of course, we're in the middle of a pandemic and people can't meet in person right now. And even if you could meet in person, you don't want to because you don't want to potentially run the risk of either catching a freaking highly contagious virus or possibly passing it to someone else. So, through the use of this tool known as Slippy, I guess that's how you pronounce it, Slippy or whatever, Slippy, I don't know. I'm going to just say Slippy. Anyway... Through the use of this tool, it makes playing Super Smash Bros. Melee, or emulating it with the Dolphin emulator, it gives it online capabilities, to my understanding, which was how they were going to run this tournament, so that everybody could play from the safety of their own homes and play Melee. Well, Nintendo got wind of this. Apparently, they reached out and asked them to not do this or to change the terms of their tournament, I'd assume being that either they asked them to pull Melee completely or to, if, if at all possible, in a way to do it safely to arrange for an in-person tournament instead. But they apparently did not want to do that. And so instead, Nintendo decided to answer their decision to not go that way with a cease and desist order and it has caused a tremendous backlash on the internet and I would say it's rightfully so now here's the thing Nintendo is likely within their legal rights to do this they own Super Smash Brothers and they can say at any time they want to that if they don't want a particular person or any particular person at all, uh, or the general public, I should have put it that way, uh, to stream or play a game a certain way, they can step in and say this is hurting our, you know, a uh, piece of intellectual property we own. And... They would be legally correct. However, you're talking about a video game that Nintendo no longer profits off of. Nintendo no longer sells super. See, let me get. Let me get. I'm gonna have to back up because their what their issue is with is with the uh, usage of Slippy, as the statement says. If you can read it or not, I mean. I, let me stop and just read it. It says, The Big House is heartbroken to share that we've received a cease and desist order from Nintendo of America Incorporated to cancel our upcoming online event. We were informed we do not have permission to, to host or broadcast the event, primarily due to the uses of Slippy. 
Sadly, all of all our competitions are affected. We are forced to comply with the order and cancel the big house online for both Melee and Ultimate. Refund information will be sent shortly. We apologize to those impacted. So, their issue is with Slippy as it changes how the game is played because the GameCube did not have that online ability, or at least uh, as far as I know, uh, you couldn't play any online game. Um, uh, you couldn't play any GameCube game online. Uh, and I could be wrong about that. But it's been a long time since the GameCube was around. And uh, when Melee was even a thing. So let's let's stop and just analyze this. Because the GameCube is a console from three generations ago. Three generations ago. To put it in a more simple context. Because the PlayStation is uh, is named in a much simpler fashion. That would be like Sony right now complaining about people finding a way to play a, a non-online PS2 game. As the PS5 is currently their current, you know, is their current con uh, console. So, that's just insane. It's a game that they don't sell. The only way to get Melee now is through a roundabout means. You can't purchase it directly from Nintendo anymore. And major retailers don't carry it anymore. So, you're on the only way you're going to get it is through somebody selling it themselves. Like from an individual. So Nintendo is not going to profit off of any sale of Melee at this point. They've completely abandoned it and moved on. So it's very weird that they would even care how people play this old game. Because you can't make the argument that they've lost a sale because of emulation. Because it's a game that's not legally available to buy. So there is no option to buy this game. In which would benefit Nintendo in any way. And I don't... And, and, and Well, I'll get into that later. But primarily speaking, like... What is the reason for Nintendo to get so mad at this? So the reason being, of course, is that they is the assumption that people playing with Slippy and it being an emulation is that they did not get their ROMs legally. Which... The, which the legality of all of this, of emulation and obtaining ROMs, is so muddled and contradictory from what I've found that it's almost like it it's legal and not legal at the same time. Because the law seems to contradict itself. So, here's, the, here's what I don't get. So, by all accounts, from what I understand, is if you rip the game ROM from the cartridge or disc of whatever game you own, then that's fine. If you if you download the ROM, though, from the internet, that's not okay. Even if you own a physical copy of the game, because that means that you got it from somebody who's uploaded it to the internet, which is the main problem they don't want. So they don't want an online source of just ROMs floating out there of games because people might go download games that they did not buy and don't own in any legal capacity. The problem with that, though, is, I at least in my opinion, is that it depends on what game you're talking about. If you're downloading ROMs for new games, just released games as a means of getting out of paying for them, then that is stealing. If there, if if a game is readily available to purchase, like any Switch game, pretty much, especially like the ones that you can buy online, you you have no excuse to do that. But if it's an old game that's out of print and the console you play it on is out of print, and just so the, and just for the record, remember that uh, the Wii had backwards compatibility, so you could play Melee on the Wii legitimately. But the Wii is two generations old. The Wii U does not support GameCube uh, game discs, and you can't. And and Melee was never sold for the Wii or the Wii U. They never did that. They moved on to Brawl, and then the Wii U version of Smash Brothers. So Brawl was left to be recycled on the Wii. I mean, uh, not Brawl, Melee. But, um, 
So it makes no sense for Nintendo to be worried about Melee as a game and it affecting sales because they're not offering Melee to anybody. Which leads me to ask, why does Nintendo not do things like port this game? Like, they know that Melee in particular has a giant committed fan base of people who still regularly play this game online and some even prefer it to Ultimate. I get that Ultimate is the current uh, product, but if there are enough people out there who say they prefer Melee, or that Melee itself has enough unique features in the Smash Brothers, you know, uh, catalog to make it stand alone and people want to play it, sort of like how Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is like the definitive classic Marvel vs. Capcom or Capcom and meets uh, Marvel game uh, over the years. That's the one everybody loves. That's the one everybody remembers. I mean, I'm sure some people are, have uh, an affinity for the first Marvel vs. Capcom or Marvel vs. Uh, Street Fighter or X-Men vs. Street Fighter or even the older games that predate those like the Marvel Super Heroes game or X, uh, X-Men Children of the Atom. So, just sometimes cer- certain games stick with people. And there's just no reason why they can't, say, port Melee and make it online, unless they just don't want to bother with improving the online feature like we've seen with Ultimate. People still say, like, even after Ultimate has been upgraded and the online play may have improved slightly, it's still not good. And they apparently don't really have any interest in in making it, like, smooth. So, I don't understand it. Like, because the argument, I think, would disappear. Like, you'll want people downloading ROMs of games. Well, I mean, again, like, and just, and I was talking to somebody about this on uh, Twitter last night. Like, the fact that getting a ROM or having a ROM of your game in and of itself really isn't a problem. It's just the means of which you get it is what they want to fight. Again, you have to presume that the people who are downloading these games or ROMs or whatever on the internet are doing so strictly to avoid paying for them. And I think it's just kind of crazy. It just seems like such a waste of time too because again, Melee is almost 20 years old at this point on a console that is no longer in circulation And the most recent console you could play it on is, again, two generations old. The the Wii is is gone. We're currently, like, four or five, I don't remember. Like, we are well within the, the, the lifespan of the Switch, and I don't think the Switch is going anywhere anytime soon. But, there is so many games that Nintendo just sits on. And then they get mad when people emulate them because they just let them sit. There's an entire catalog of N64 games that Nintendo could throw up on the uh, online service, the same way they did the NES and Super NES games, and people would be more than happy to pay uh, an annual fee for that. Although, the current catalogs for NES and Super NES games is very, very slim, even compared to the Wii U and Wii eShops, so... I just don't understand why they don't do this. Like, I've seen a lot of people complaining. uh, I I watched some videos on this last night about people saying, like, there's no online catalog for video games the same way there is, like, music or TV shows or films where you can go online and pay for a film on a particular service and then just watch it or rent it, even digitally. You can't do that with video games. And I think that the on, the Nintendo Online Swi- uh, Switch service is is good, or it's a good idea, but I don't think they're doing all with it that they could. Like, it wasn't that long ago that they just added the Donkey Kong Country games to the uh, catalog. Like, why did that take so long? They only seem to add new games to that catalog every, like, th- three months or so. It's almost like it's just a reminder that, hey, this is out there. I think the last time they added games to it, I only like the only game that I saw that I wanted to play was or replay in this case was Donkey Kong Country 2. I've beaten Donkey Kong Country 2 a million times on the original SNES. 
and I would love to play it again. But some of the other games I've seen are just super obscure. I think one of them is even not even translated from Japanese into English. You just have to kind of just go in there and try to figure it out. I think it's a fairly simple game. I don't remember which one it is, but it just they, they need to do more. But again, this just this doesn't make sense. I mean, I've never I don't really understand the problem with emulation when it comes to games that you legally own. As long as you own the physical hardware necessary to play the game, I don't see why emulating it is is a, a big deal. Like my current run of Super Mario 64 is um done with an emulator. But I have an N64 that is playable and I have a copy a, cart- a cartridge of Mario 64 that is playable. So what's the problem? I also have and bought the physical version of Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which contains Super Mario 64. So whether I'm playing it through an emulator or playing it through my Switch when I record the gameplay, why does it matter? It shouldn't matter. I mean, again, I don't think that people who use like the online like ROM sites and stuff to get around uh, paying for games, I don't think that's fair. I mean, I know that people I mean, look at YouTube. I mean, there are people post clips of stuff they don't own all the time on YouTube. I mean, but I don't think that actually like hurts the industry. And in particular, we're talking about old games. We're talking about games from 20 years ago that... Of course, the publisher themselves, like the Nintendo, has abandoned. And Nintendo doesn't care about Melee anymore. They can't make money off of Melee. Or they've chosen not to make money off of Melee in 2020. Instead, they have they want Ultimate to, to make all the sales. Which I don't understand why they can't just do both. You see this game has a diehard fan base. Port it. Make it playable online. Maybe since it's an older game, you can uh, make it. Uh, functional online maybe it won't be quite as complicated I don't know because I'm not a tech wizard but why not try reach out to people listen to the uh to the fan base listen to people who want to consume your content you don't think that some of these people these hardcore melee fans who still play melee religiously 20 years later wouldn't be willing to pay for a service or pay for the game online if it went uh if it showed up in the eShop, of course they would. An HD widescreen possibly port of of Melee, you don't think people would want to see that? I mean, they kind of already proved that this type of consumer exists with the release of Mario 64, uh, I mean, uh, Mario 3D All-Stars. I mean, these are games that have been out forever that, you know, the world doesn't need to see again. Although I think people just love these games and want to keep playing them. So why wouldn't you port them? And they even went so far as to do the fake uh, widescreen option for Sunshine to try to make it look a little better. I mean, in... I don't think the game, I don't think these are perfect ports, in ca- in, and in some cases, uh, as people later found out, which is very, very ironic and hypocritical of Nintendo, uh, the ports are apparently run through emulation. So, Super Mario 3D All-Stars apparently are emulated, and though I've seen that d- disputed, I'm not entirely sure, so I'll, I'll leave some benefit of the doubt there, but I do know for a fact that uh, like the eShop versions of like the old NES and some of the Super NES games were in fact uh, emulated. And do not mistake the fact that the NES minis and uh, SNES minis are emulators. So, so Nintendo themselves don't have a problem with emulation. They just have a problem with the fact that they think they can, you know, milk you for money in any way they can. And again. I have an NES and Super NES Mini. I have a million different ways to play some of these games. So, 
Make the, like, do something with this. Do you see that people love Melee? Whether, like, whether you want to argue or not whether Melee deserves to still be, you know, to still be relevant 20 years later. You know, that's a different discussion. But let the people play the game they want to play if you're not going to sell it to people. Oh, this game doesn't originally have online. You're alternating it. Whatever. It's 20 years old. You don't want people to play this game in, in a... Uh, you don't want people to go around the original limitations of the game to uh, play it in a way that you didn't originally envision? Well, guess what? You're Nintendo. You've had one of the best years you've probably had in a long, long time. Put, put your money where your mouth is and provide people with an official way to play Melee Online. You can do it. It's possible. I'm sure it is. Somebody knows how to work that and make it happen. If, if, if this emulator can do it, surely Nintendo can afford to provide an official means to do it. See, that's the real problem. The real problem is, is that it's not Nintendo's feature. Sort of like how, what was it? Was it, uh, was it Street Fighter 4 or 5? I can't remember which one it was, where the online play was really bad. And then somebody went into the files and uh, fixed it. It may not have even been Capcom, but somebody released a patch for a game that's online was terrible. And they released a fan-made patch that actually fixed the net code or something like that, or the rollback. Uh, I, I'm probably butchering these terms because I don't fully understand them and how the coding and all works. But basically, a fan fixed a game with terrible online. And then the publisher turned around and basically wanted to ban people for using the fan-made patch. Then issued their own patch, which actually was not as good as the fan patch. So it's more about the idea that like, oh, we didn't come up with this, so we don't want people doing it. You know, if we're going to do this, we want to be the ones to do it. Only in Nintendo's case, they're just not going to do it. They just don't want somebody else to do it. That's what the real problem is. And of course, money, because that's what co uh, corporations, that's the, that's the end game of every corporation, and they don't really care, you know, they don't, it's not about protecting Smash Brothers or, or even Melee specifically. It's just about money. And I assume that they're going to, that they're, that the implication is, well, we could, what if we do this one day? This could cost us money. Or you've stolen Melee off of the internet, a game that you can't legally purchase anywhere in a way that benefits Nintendo at all. You cannot buy this game from Nintendo anymore. If you want to buy Melee, you're going to have to send Bob from Michigan or wherever. Uh, probably 200 bucks at least. I don't know how much Melee runs for used on Amazon or wherever people sell it. But you're probably going to have to sell out a pretty penny to get your hands on a physical disc of Melee these days. Some games are just really rare. But again, I just add to that the whole deal with like the pandemic and the reason why they wanted to do an online tournament is because they can't do in-person tournaments. I mean, it just it's like somebody said, just because you have the legal authority to do something doesn't mean that you should. I mean, when when the ultimate goal here is just to flex your legal muscles and your, you know, your financial muscles and like, oh, we're going to intimidate you. Uh, you can't stream this 20 year old game. <sighs> Fear our lawyers. Like, yeah, that's that's all this is. That's, that's all this is. They're like Toei Animation when it comes to. You know, their handling of shows, like, when Toei uh, threatened to sue the governments of certain countries that set up big public screenings of the finale of Dragon Ball Super. Like, that was crazy, man. Like, what are you gonna, when you're a little business, you're gonna sue the government of Brazil or wherever it was for setting up big public screenings of this cartoon 
Like, okay, sure, maybe you have a legal standing that technically and legally you have the right to do this as a business protecting your uh, property uh, rights. But why not just go with it and accept the fact that this show is so popular that a government is willing to set up a public screening for it for its citizens to unite and watch together? Why not just take that and say, hey, you know what? We could, you know, maybe technically this is a violation of our stuff, but we could turn this into some really positive PR by showing just how united the world is when it comes to Dragon Ball and how uh, important and big the series is to the world and as a whole. Like, there are videos online of people in these massive crowds watching that finale. And cheering for Frieza. That is like that is a very unique thing that only Dragon Ball is going to get. No other series finale is gonna get this. And Toei should have ran with it and its uniqueness and embraced it. But they didn't. They decided they like we're gonna get tough and Rrr. and it's just for no reason. And it just made them look bad. It didn't stop the showings. So what was the point? Other than to try to just intimidate people. And the only way I know to end this is that uh, someone on Twitter. I'm going to see if I can find it because I retweeted it. Uh, it was a quote from uh, the late uh, Iwata. You know, the Nintendo, uh, the Nintendo president passed away, uh, several years back. Here it is. It's from, uh, it's from, uh, the, from creator of, uh, Boundary Break. Uh, you can go find that on his Twitter, uh, at Browner, uh, Browndery, at Boundary Break. So, uh, it says, and this is the quote from, uh, Satoru Iwata, uh, it would not be appropriate if retweet uh, it it would not be appropriate if retreat I'm getting tongue tied. So let's start over one more time. It would not be appropriate if we treated people who did something based on affection for Nintendo as criminals. And that basically sums up and by the way, I don't think that Nintendo completely, you know, I don't think that even during that era, Nintendo was completely, you know, innocent of stuff like that because I think they've always kind of have a, had this tendency to decide that the best option in the face of, you know, uncertain things or whether or not somebody has taken advantage of their IP or whatever. Like, we've seen this with the fan games get shut down. Like, oh, somebody made their own fan Pokemon game that a few people played on stream that features a few Pokemon that aren't official. Oh, gotta shut that down. Surely a modded version of Pokemon Fire Red in 2020 is bound to make some people say, oh, I'd rather play this game than Sword and Shield. Like, no, if somebody's going to play that, if somebody would rather play a modded version of Fire Red in the year 2020, they weren't going to buy Sword and Shield in the first place. I mean, so this is something we've seen, and I don't think Nintendo's going to change their tune on this. I think they're going to try to keep fighting it, because I think that the overall goal is to try to change the legal precedent that emulation in and of itself is legal that it's the it's the dealing with ROMs that are the gray area I think Nintendo wants to reverse that stance and to have uh, emulation uh, ruled illegal I think that's what their ultimate goal is, is to try to get the legal precedent changed I don't think that I think they're not going to have success with that as they pretty much are the exemption. They're the exception to the rule in terms of how developers see emulation. A lot of like game devs these days have openly admitted to modding games, which of course Nintendo is also opposed to. 
because they kind of lump modding and emulation in together as the same thing. So Nintendo is not going to change their opinion on that, even though game devs will say, yeah, we, we modded games. It's how we learned about games, how, how we learned how to make games and how certain games work. It helps us to learn how to make better games in the future. But you can't really argue with an entity that exists solely to make money and is going to uh, find any way possible to wring you dry of as much cash as they possibly can. And it hurts me to say that because I love so many of Nintendo's games and I think they do have the funnest catalog of games and the most creative in my opinion. And that's not to, you know, belittle and say that, you know, Sony and Microsoft don't have good games on their consoles because they do or Steam or whatever. But I just personally have always preferred Nintendo's games. I love Zelda and Mario and Pokemon and Smash Bros. And it's just, it just sucks to see them do this when it's not going to look good for them because the overwhelming majority of games and the industry itself just doesn't care about emulation in terms of like, especially regarding old games that are no longer illegally available. I mean, because if Nintendo cared about Melee, it would be playable on the Switch. That's just the, that's just the honest truth. There's nothing at all there's like no legal deal that's stopping them from being able to have Melee, at least as far as I'm aware, to uh, put that game on the Switch if they really wanted to. Or any of the Switch, uh, of the of the Smash Brothers games, in my opinion. I don't think that it's necessary to put all the Smash Brothers games in there, because I think, other than for the subspace, ain't nobody really clamoring for Brawl to come back. But Melee has managed to keep people's attention for some reason. And they should embrace that instead of like, eh, we have Ultimate now. At the very least, ignore it. Like, why can't they just ignore it? Like, see, that's that's the thing that gets me. Like, they, they could just ignore this. They don't have to highlight somebody else's tournament. But anyway, we see this, and one other thing I'll quickly touch on, just to kind of wrap this up, because I've been going for about an hour, is with the release of, I guess it's today, is the official first day on the 20th, Breath of the Wild has officially come out in the U.S. Problem with that is, apparently the game's been out for a day or two outside of the U.S., and of course, gamers who are not American are are going to want to stream the game that they bought with, you know, on the date of the official release, but Nintendo decided to halt or, you know, ban streams of Breath of the Wild until it was out in the U.S. I do not understand this at all. Like, the idea that you've broken the rules of streaming because the game isn't out in a country you don't live in, that's just dumb. Like, if you didn't want that to happen, why didn't you release the game worldwide on the same day? I'd assume that there's nothing stopping them from doing that. I don't think that's ever really been a problem before. At least not recently. Imagine that, though. You get, like, a, a streaming violation sent to you from Nintendo because you played a game a day ahead of its American release and you don't even live in America. That's crazy. Again, this is just stuff that makes Nintendo look bad. I mean, are you gonna... Are, are you gonna, uh... I mean, they could always go back and take these off after it's officially out. And say, okay, no harm, no foul. We just didn't want this out on this day. Maybe this was the wrong approach. But, you know. But if people are going to have to have that, like, that violation on their Twitch accounts or YouTube or whatever. Or wherever. If that's like a permanent offense for that. That's just ridiculous. So, yeah. Like, I, I don't want to spend too long on that. but Because it's it's just dumb. 
And now that the game's out in full, people can play it wherever. You know, or at least now that the game's out in the U.S. Like, it shouldn't matter. You got that game. Like, uh, like what is the logic here? And again, like this weird logic that we talked about before with the guy from uh, Google Stadia. was this idea that if you watch a game, that's going to deter you from playing it. Like, no. The whole appeal of video games is playing the game. There's a separate appeal to watching other people playing the game, but no. Like, the core enjoyment out of a game is to play it. Sure, there may be people out there who have no interest in playing the games and would only want to watch people play certain games, but to a gamer, they're going to play the game. That's what sets games apart from, like, music and shows. You cannot... You have no influence over the arc of a story that's being told within music or within uh, uh, a TV show or film because that's all written and directed by somebody else. You do have some control, though, over video games. Like, just for example, Pokemon... The team that defeats the champion at the end or captures and defeats the the bad guy or captures the legendary Pokemon in the story is up to you. You make those decisions, how that battle goes out, you know, how that battle takes place. Even in something like that's mostly insignificant, like Super Mario Odyssey, like the outfit you wear when you face Bowser is up to you. You can wear your Santa Claus outfit to face Bowser in the end. You can wear your traditional Mario outfit. You can wear the 64, you know, polygon blocky Mario outfit or the metal Mario outfit, pirate Mario outfit. You can wear whatever you want, but you have control of that. You have control of or in in Breath of the Wild where you you follow the story on your own path. It's completely open to you how you do these different things. You can go straight off of the uh, Great Plateau to face Ganon right away and just skip everything. You can do all the challenges. You can just go get the Master Sword and uh, go fight Ganon without doing some of the other stuff. It's not all necessary. You don't have to free the Sacred Beast to defeat Ganon. It just is helpful to do that. And you get more of the story background by doing that. But it's not necessary. So you control the story narrative to some extent. Even if it ends up in the same place, which is with defeating Ganon. But again, that's what I mean. The whole point of the appeal of video games is the interaction. Especially if you're talking about playing games with other people. Again, I just wish Nintendo would take a step back and realize that, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Just because Superman can sneeze a planet out of existence doesn't mean that he should, uh, you know, do that. It's just crazy, man. So, yeah, I hope... I hope everybody... You know, I hope everybody, you know, I, I hate it for the guys who wanted to do the tournament and didn't get to. That sucks. But, uh, you know, you can't, sometimes you can't fight somebody that's just got too much money. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it for the show. I've talked for a long time, longer than I thought I was going to talk. But I hope you enjoyed listening to me complain and rant. But uh, I don't know how this is going to go forward. I, I try to keep these on Saturdays. I'm going to hope I can. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. But either way, thanks for listening. Uh, tune in for the next one. Check out all my gameplay stuff. And we will see you next time. Later.